Curry County Voices welcomes you as we gather in partnership with 3,000 public access cable channels and media centers throughout the United States, KCIW, our local radio station in Brookings, and the Alliance for Community Media to celebrate Community Media Day and Free Speech Week that follows starting Monday. Community media has been providing a vehicle for the exercise of free speech for 300 years. Ben Franklin in the 1720s, under an assumed name, was publishing columns both in Boston and in Philadelphia. The next 12 months are very important ones for us in Curry County. All but one of the county offices filled by the votes of all voters of the county will be on the ballot in November. As will seats in the state and federal legislature and of course the presidency. Our county commissioners are talking about making major changes in how we fund and run county government. We at Curry County Voices thought it important as we enter these crucial 12 months to provide our fellow citizens an opportunity to stand before an open mic and exercise their First Amendment rights of free speech. We, Curry County Voices, is filming it. It will be placed on our currycountyvoices.com website and YouTube uh, in a matter of days. We hope to host similar afternoons during the coming months, and we will, as we have in the past, hold candidate discussion evenings throughout the county. Before we start, I want to thank the Curry Public Library for making the space available to us and of course our sponsors. And I need to make the usual disclaimer that the views that may be expressed today are not necessarily those of the library, Curry County Voices, or our sponsors. So let's get to it. I was going to assign strict time restrictions on speakers since we have a limited time period. But we have, so far, five people who wish to speak. So my thinking is to start. If we get to five minutes, you'll see a yellow sign and a red sign a minute later. If the person speaking says something that you feel an urge to respond to, either in favor or in opposition, we have a second microphone. Approach that microphone and you will have an opportunity to speak as well. Free speech is a two-way street. One may exercise the right by speaking. Others need to recognize that right by respecting that person's right to speech. While we recognize the right to attack ideas, we ask that folks refrain from engaging in personal attacks or maligning people, they could avoid doing that. So with that said, I'll pick up a ticket and read out a number, and the first speaker can come up to the mic. The last three digits are 068. <laughs> 068. Nobody's claiming no 68. How on? I'll go to the next one. <laughs> we'll keep it alive. <laughs> oh, 060. Oh. Good afternoon, I'm Rory Legui. You know, I've lived in uh, Gold Beach almost 30 years now. I really thank God for the light of this library. It's really changed over the years. 
Uh, and I think it's a unifying light in a dark, divisive culture. And I really thank you for promoting free speech. You know, there's, there's more Christian free speech in Russia schools right now than in our schools. Uh, basically, it's been the, the church over in Eastern Europe that has prayed and, and pulled down some of the uh, communist repression of free speech. Um, I just heard a story about, um, oh, in Poland, the communists um, told the Christian, well, it was a public school, told the students to take all the crosses down in the hallways. Well, they did, but they marched them through, um, through the city as a protest. And uh, it just seemed like they had a little more in guts than some Americans. You know, in 1962, they took prayer and Bible and Ten Commandments off our walls, but there wasn't hardly a, a whimper about that. Um, some states now are even thinking of uh, labeling Christian TV in the Bible as hate speech. Um, just recently, uh, pro football had to back off after banning uh, Man of God headbands. Some of the players were wearing these Man of God headbands, and they banned those for a while, uh, but they evidently got them back. You know, our nation was founded uh, by Christians coming over from Europe to have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And, uh, you know, some of President Trump's speech is not very Christian, but uh, he's been the first president since our founding fathers to allow churches to speak on government, politics, and candidates. He's actually the first leader in United Nations, the UN history, um, to stand for religious liberty. He's the first president to allow female pastors to pray at any presidential inauguration. And I think he's about one of the most pro-life presidents uh, that speaks for the innocent babies that have no voice. You know, we may not love Trump, but we need to love God and our nation uh, to prevent division. Abraham Lincoln quoted Jesus Christ saying, you know, united we stand, divided we fall. And this just seems some of the most divisive culture that I've ever seen in my life. The greatest thing is love, and, and love will happen when we can have maybe Republicans and Democrats uh, honor each other, at least hopefully tolerate one another. That's true free speech when we can agree to disagree, still accepting different and difficult sinners as Jesus died to do. Uh, you know, I had little voice uh, with God till I accepted Jesus as my personal savior back in the 70s during the uh, speech, oh, there's free speech movements, all kind of protests going back there in the 70s. Jesus' voice of good news was snuffed out by fake religionists, religionists but his uh, blood speaks forgiveness till today. He lives by his spirit now and any willing that are welcome him. And, and I just want to welcome his healing spirit here. I would just like to pray healing for anybody that needs healing in their spirit or their soul or body. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, bind up father and mother wounds. You know, many in America have uh, father and mother wounds. They feel unloved orphans. And that's why I think some of us have, uh, many of us have an angry edge in our free speech. We just have not received love. They've discovered now that 55 out of the last 56 male shooters in America have, are either fatherless or have some terrible resentments toward their fathers. So I think that's one root to some of the violence and terrorism that we've seen. We all want to be loved and accepted just for who we are. So, Father, I just pray the Holy Spirit come now and heal any wounded spirits, any broken hearts, and e even if there's joint pain or arthritis, I just pray uh, your warmth. You know, if you feel any warmth and electricity in your bones or joints right now, just, just receive uh, healing. God wants to heal our hearts and our bodies. Um, and I prayed yesterday about specific um, conditions. I don't think anybody has um, a, a nose blister or polyp in a nose that that is difficult breathing, just, just believe that Jesus wants to heal that. Um, I prayed yesterday, you do? Your nose hurts? Yeah, oh no, I must have raised your hand. And I, and I, and I saw yesterday a checkered shirt. Uh, your name wouldn't have to be Raymond, would it? Yes, it may. Your name's Raymond? That's correct. Well, good. That's, I just felt like God told me to pray for Raymond and, and just that you've had some difficult relationships, so I just pray that God heal your relationships. And the other picture I got was Flaming Redhead. And I don't know if they ever called you Flame in your childhood, uh, but God wants to um, heal your heart in any difficult relationships. And I don't know, do you have a daughter? Do you have a daughter? No. No? Okay. I do not. Okay. I was just thinking uh, God wanted to heal uh, a daughter of a, of a redhead. 
And then I had a strange picture yesterday of somebody on a farm or ranch that had angry cows. <laughs> what do you got the angry cows on their ranch or farm? But God wants to heal and prosper, prosper your cows. So uh, God just wants to bless you. He wants to reparent all of us. So that's it, Carl. One question. Sure. I'm not very good at you, you, you made a lot of statements that, I, in my mind, I want to go fact check. Sure. They were today. Or I want to like, understand what you said, and they were said very quickly, about President Trump being the most able to, or the most, has demonstrated that he's more freedom of religion than anybody else. What Can you go over that part again? And something about a female posture. Uh, sure. A female pastor being allowed to yeah. participate. And I'm, I'm not sure what exactly sure. you meant. Yeah, I just heard this from the news. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. That he was I the want to know your source. Yeah. What news was this? I just have to ask. Uh, I think it was ABC that had President Trump speak recently at the United Nations and that he was the first leader of, of any world country to uh, fight for religious liberty. He said that? Who said that? I just, because uh, I don't think that's the, correct. Whoever the announcer was on. Yeah. I, I think it was it. NBC News. I mean, that was just kind of, you threw him all those things, yeah. and I was like, what is he saying? Yeah, and then his advisor... And I don't think a lot was true. Well, you can check it. Uh, well, I don't think I want to check yeah, it. Yeah, you have to check all the UN leaders. Um, but anyway, that's what the newscaster said. And, and then uh, said Paula White is his advisor. She's the first um, female pastor that's ever got to say a prayer at his inauguration. So you're saying there was a female pastor that is the first one in our country that actually gave a prayer at a president's inauguration. Exactly. Is that what you were saying? Exactly. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to clarify yeah. that. I think it's also important not just to love our nation, but to love all nations, yeah. and care as much about Iranian children as we do about American children. Yeah. I think all this nationalism stuff is very dangerous. It's just like football teams. And national, you know, our little country, I mean, it, it's di divisive in its inception, and so it turns on like, that's why I want to go. Oh, and I do think that when we stop having to use the terms Democrat and Republican, or people have to stop forming these two groups, which none of us are really all this or all that, then we can grow a little bit. I don't know why people get so entrenched on defining, and I can't tell you how many people have called me without even knowing what I think. They say I'm a progressive, and they walk away. It's like, and I'm just trying to understand what they think, and I can never figure it out. So I guess I met people defensive. Good Thank point. You. That's a good point. I agree. It's labels are yeah. I mean, we, yeah. I mean, maybe we can stop using them. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. First, I would like to point out that this country was found. One of the founding principles was freedom of religion, not just Christianity. Right. Okay. Right. And. Although I believe Christ was a fabulous teacher, and I absolutely agree with everything he said, I don't think most Christian churches actually practice what he taught at all. And in fact, many faith traditions have been snuffed out in the name of Christianity, which I do not believe Christ is in agreement with, including my faith tradition. So I would like to make a prayer and I would like to bless everybody in the name of the goddess and the great god of nature. So you can close your eyes or not, but I would like to offer you this time of the year the cornucopia of wonderful things that creation has to offer. Creation meaning the cycles of nature. And I would like you to make a commitment to try to preserve the wonderful creation we have and not destroy it out of greed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful country to have where we could have different voices of religion. That's been one of the most divisive spirits throughout history as far as religions killing religions. Yeah. Well, I'm Tim, and I really appreciate this forum. I mean, just hearing people talking about stuff like this is very refreshing to me, whatever your point of view. And I realize, you know, I can't stand Donald Trump. I realize in my heart I have to forgive him just like everybody else. And so I see somebody likes him, or you, know, you say there's something good about him, like, well, maybe that you know softens that part of my heart that's hardened to him, and I really can't feel that way towards anybody, even him. 
So I'd like to thank whoever puts this whole program on the radio station and everything. And yes, thank you very much. Just uh, it's very exciting for me just to hear people together on a day, you know, like this, talking about what they believe strongly in. And I, I, I can't imagine anything better than that. Hopefully we can keep talking and listening. Um, so, it, kind of in conjunction with that freedom of speech and freedom of religion is for all religions. Um, I was educated in Catholic schools and um, religion was absolutely a cornerstone of, of all of that. Um, but it is, if you look at the larger picture, freedom of religion means that we are each free to practice whatever religion calls to us. Um, I think it's an unfair influence to have uh, Christian symbols in the public school systems. Because, because it predisposes that those young minds to a certain philosophy. Now, I'm not saying the philosophy is bad. I, you know, Christianity, Christian principles as taught by Jesus are absolutely, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Of course that's what you do if you're a decent human being, of course. But to label it, again, and we get into the whole label things, you know, to label it Christianity, as opposed to Wiccan, for instance, or Muslim, or, I mean, any of the other ones. It just seems to me an unfair influence. If we're gonna have the cross up there in a classroom, let's have all of the symbols of all of the world religions and, and make the education about these are the different philosophies, these are the different religious philosophies, and they all hold as much value as the next one. And really, if you really take it apart, they're all saying the same thing. Yes, yes. So, I, you know, that, that's, if, if we want to get away from divisiveness, then let's embrace it, because it's, it's really all the same. That's, that's what I think. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. That's just the type of discussion we were looking for today. The next number is 082. Hi, I'm Linda Bose. I'm from Brookings. And um, I just want to join everyone else in thanking the library for this wonderful facility and the Rotary and, and Curry Voice, County, Curry County Voices for getting this all set up and, and KCIW for partnering. Um, I, full disclosure, I am on the KCIW board, so I <laughs> appreciate you know, all that we do. Um, I, and I want to send a special shout out to a group of people in Brookings that work really hard to save the monarch butterflies. And have worked so hard, one of them right here. And, and, and nurturing the little, the eggs and the, the tiny little eggs and the caterpillars and all they've done to, to make sure those caterpillars grow into butterflies instead of getting eaten by predators because the butterflies monarchs have been decreasing in number. And so we're, people in Brookings are working and have been very successful in, in, in increasing the number of monarchs and, and then releasing them to go on their long journey. Um, and some have been found in 
Oakland that I've heard of so far, I don't know, but they've, they've been found in distant places. They fly amazing distances. And they're so amazing, and we need to keep them and take care of them. So what I'd like to encourage all of you, even if you can't raise monarchs, or it's a big project, so, um, but if you're not ready to do that, if you have a garden of any kind, please don't put pesticides and herbicides on it. We don't need to do that. When I look out at our yard, we don't spray, well, we do put some vinegar on dandelion sometimes, but other than that, we don't use any poisons in our yard. And it's very green, I mean, it's doing just fine. And we do have birds coming to our, our feeder, and, and we've had butterflies, and so, and, and we also have spiders, and the spiders are doing a good job of catching some of the bugs that we'd rather not have. So even the snails, they're not really bothering anything. We have so much green in this country that a little bit the snail eats doesn't kind of hurt anything. So, so I would just really like to encourage you, say the butterflies and the birds, our family loves birds, and, and pesticides and herbicides are decreasing the number of the, I, I think most news sources have been talking about uh, birds, one in four birds being gone, uh, number-wise, and I think that's worldwide, but it's really sad because if that's one in four now, it, that will, number will increase at the number of birds that are gone, and we really need to save them, and we want to prevent extinction too, so something we can all do is garden naturally and sustainably, and Think about what you're putting on your garden because um, don't poison the creatures out there, please. So that's, and, and again, thank you to those monarchs, savers, the, those who, who work so hard to, to uh, take care of monarchs, but other, other animals and birds too. So, okay. Hi, my name's Nancy. I'll not say anything further. I've lived here for three years. I argued with myself about whether I was willing to come out and uh, make a statement about something that's of great concern to me because I find in this community that making such statements out loud is a liability. I have never been treated so rudely in my life as I have here based upon assumptions about the fact that maybe I dress differently, people don't recognize me, uh, I'm different, and I was born different. I was born to be a research scientist, which I was, and am at heart, despite the fact that I'm retired. I am incredibly devoted to my country. In searching my forebears, I found out that a great-great-great-grandfather led the charge up Bunker Hill. His name was Joshua Harmon, and he had two other brothers, which also led um, incursions against the English. So it's in my blood. And yet, at this point in our nation's history, I must speak out. And in trying to write it myself, I realized it's just going to sound like crazy liberal opinion, and no one's going to listen. So instead, I'm going to read an op-ed that was written and submitted to the New York Times by Admiral McRaven, a former commander of the United States Special Operations Command, who has just retired. And he says, last week I attended two memorable events that reminded me why we care so very much about this nation and also why our future may be in peril. The first was a change of command ceremony for a storied army unit in which one general officer passed authority to another. 
The second event was an annual gala for the Office of Strategic Services Society that recognized past and present members of the intelligence and special operations community for their heroism and sacrifice to the nation. What struck me was the stark contrast between the words and deeds heralded these events and the words and deeds emanating from the White House. On the parade field at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, were tens of thousands of soldiers where tens of thousands of soldiers have marched, either preparing to go to war or returning from it. The two generals, highly decorated, impeccably dressed, clear-eyed, and strong of character, were humbled by the moment. They understood the awesome responsibility that the nation had placed on their shoulders. They understood that they had an obligation to serve their soldiers and their soldiers' families. They believed in the American values for which they had been fighting for the past three decades. They have faith that these values are worth sacrificing everything for, including, if necessary, their lives. Having served with both officers for the past 20 years, I know that they personify all that is good and decent and honorable about the American military with genuineness of their humanity and humility, their uncompromising integrity, their willingness to sacrifice for all, all for a worthy cause and the pride they had in their soldiers. Later that week, at the OSS Society dinner, there were films and testimonials to the valor of the men and women who fought in Europe and the Pacific during World War II. We also celebrated the 75th anniversary of D-Day, recognizing those brave Americans and allies who sacrificed so much to fight Nazism and fascism. We were reminded that the greatest generation went to war because it believed that we, are all, we were the good guys, that wherever there was oppression, tyranny, despotism, America would be there. We, were, we would be there because freedom mattered. We would be there because the world needed us, and if not us, then who? Also that evening, we recognized the incredible sacrifice of a new generation of Americans an Army Special Forces warrant officer who had been wounded three times, the, mo the most recent injury costing him his left leg above the knee. He was still in uniform and still serving. There was an intelligence officer who embodied the remarkable traits of those men and women who served in the OSS. A retired Marine general who 40 years of service demonstrated all that was honorable about the Corps and public service. But the most poignant recognition that evening was for a young female sailor who had been killed in Syria serving alongside our allies, the Kurds, in the fighting against ISIS. Her husband, a former Army Green Beret, accepted the award on her behalf. Like so many that came before her, she had answered the nation's call and willingly put her life in harm's way. For everyone who has ever served in uniform or in the intelligence community, for those diplomats who voice the nation's principles, for the first responders, for the tellers of truth, the truth, and the millions of American citizens who were raised believing in American values, you would have seen your reflection in the faces of those honored last week. But beneath the outward sense of hope and duty that I witnessed at these two events, there was an underlying current of frustration, humiliation, anger and fear that echoed across the sidelines. The America they had believed in was under attack, not from without, but from within. These men and women, of all political persuasions, have seen the assault on our institutions, on the intelligence and law enforcement community, the State Department, and press. They have seen our leaders stand beside despots, and strong men, preferring their government narration to our own. They have seen us abandon our allies and have heard the shouts of betrayal from the battlefield. As I stood on the parade field at Fort Bragg, one retired four-star general grabbed my arm, shook me, and shouted, I don't like the Democrats, but Trump is destroying the Republic. Those words echoed with me throughout the week. It is easy to destroy an organization if you have no appreciation for what makes that organization great. 
We are not the most powerful nation in the world because of our aircraft carriers, our economy, or our seat in the United Nations Security Council. We are the most powerful nation in the world because we try to be the good guys. We are the most powerful nation in the world because our ideals of universal freedom and equality have been backed up by our belief that we are champions of justice and protectors of the less fortunate. But if we don't care about our values, if we don't care about duty and honor, if we don't help the weak and stand up against oppression and injustice, what will happen to the Kurds, the Iraqis, the Afghans, the Syrians, the Rohingyas, the South Sudanese, and the millions of people under the boot of tyranny or left abandoned by their failing uh, states? I'm almost done. Anyway. Finish it. It's almost done. Yeah, finished. All right. If our promises are meaningless, how will our allies ever trust us? If we can't have faith in our nation's principles, why would men and women of this nation join the military? And if they don't join, who will protect us? If we are not the champions of the good and the right, then who will follow us? And if no one follows us, where will the world end up? President Trump seems to believe that these qualities are unimportant or show weakness. He is wrong. These are the virtues that have sustained this nation for the past 243 years. If we hope to continue to lead the world and inspire a new generation of young men and women to our cause, then we must embrace these values now more than ever. And it does go on, but that's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What was your name? Hello. One second. You might be preaching to the choir. You might not. Be <laughs> you might be preaching to the choir. But, and just in case anybody else here hasn't found it yet, I've discovered a podcast called The Oath by Chuck Rosenberg. And I don't know anything about all this Admiral stuff, but I think the man you mentioned was it William McRaven. And then there's James Tavardis, a four star general. Have you heard The Oath? Has anybody else here listened to this podcast? This was McRaven, yes. Okay, he is interviewed on the oath. The oath is interviewing all these people that I had no idea. I mean, I'm not gonna even get into what I feel about war and this and that. The honor with which these, so, and the oath is the oath that they take to the Constitution and as a admiral or what, it's incredible. Lawyers, um, the jurisprudence system, justice system, to hear these honor, and James Comey, he's interviewing all the, I mean, I could read the list of people that he interviews. It's wonderful. And if anybody doesn't know how to quickly access podcasts, I'm happy to show you, because I was ignorant. But they, it has given me hope, it has made me feel more honorable about America, to really know that there's really capable and honorable men and women that are incredibly dedicated, intelligent, I mean, all the things that we need, and it's like, they're on it. Lies and it's okay. all being questioned right now. I mean, yeah. they're all, everybody's, you know, I encourage anybody to listen to it if you want some hope. <laughs> and we're all learning about our constitution. And I think that the um, the silver lining, because I think there's always a silver lining, and that's where I go, um, is that because of this debacle in Washington, because of this this thing that we can't actually comprehend that it's actually happening in our country. But because of it, I think the country's waking up a little. Um, certainly, those of us who are already sort of woke are like, oh, okay, I took my eyes off the ball, I really need to pay more attention. But I think even, even the people who have not been particularly involved in their government, which as democracy, you should be involved in your government, um, are starting to go, wait a minute. The, that, isn't, that isn't the way, we are supposed to be trying to be the good guys. We will fail, inevitably, we will fail to be the good guys all the time. Um, but you gotta, you gotta at least shoot for it. So, yeah. And, don't hide yourself under a bush. There's a lot of us out there. There are. And a people lot. get afraid to speak up because of
Oh, I am. Yeah. It, things have happened to me here. I'm sorry. I'm sure they have. I just think some have them all the way. I'll add a footnote. There is a group organized throughout the country, but very prominently in the south coast of Oregon, called the Oath Keepers, yeah. who are former military and law enforcement people who are determined to have an armed resistance should their federal government come in and try to take away their arms. So. When you do your Google searching for things about the oath, you'll, you'll come across the oath. Well, that's really different from what I was talking about. That is yes. much different, yes. yes. I'm I'm just a, 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 a factual yes. statement. Thank you. The, the other number is 062. 062. Anyone out there with the number 062? You don't want to respect the leader of our nation. What do you respect? I absolutely do not respect the leader. I know. She's a well, that's, that's, well, we can have a discussion yes. up here. Yes. But I can see you're a vulgar liar. Oh, my dear. Oh, Wait. The no, president was lying. Sir, we, we, I thought we had an understanding we would attack issues but not people. So the, the microphones are for the discussion. The president is a person and she's attacking them viciously. Many of us are. But please, what? tell us why we shouldn't. That wasn't that, exactly. That's, that's that. keep the discussion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, 068. I have two numbers that somebody has. One is 068. You, you ready? You wish to speak from yeah. the microphone? Come on. Please do, yeah. And if, if any of you have developed an urge to come up and speak, just <laughs> when we're done with the numbers being called, raise your hand and we'll welcome you at the microphone. Thank you. Well, since our illustrious lady in black bothered me to uh, give a bit of her background so we'd know her roots to see the power of her tree, I guess I should give a little of mine. My last name is Frost. My great uncle was Robert Frost, the poet. And when I was in college studying poetry, they accused me of stealing his work and publishing it. And I said, well, I never read my uncle's work, so it wouldn't affect mine. So they took it to the Yale University, came back and apologized, said, uh, sorry, you didn't plagiarize Mr. Frost. Uh, your work is totally, your work, it wasn't plagiarized. They said, but it was just like Robert Frost picked up a pen and started writing again. They said I had every nuance, style, and quality of Robert Frost, which I was greatly honored. My brother got his name. Unfortunately, I only got his talent. And uh, my other uncle, three-star General Ward Ryan, who I was named after, got his name, Ward. And uh, after I got back from Vietnam, I went to his office at Fort Sheridan, Chicago, where he's three-star general commander of the Fifth Army. And before that, he was in charge of Saudi Arabia. Before that, the Rock Marines of Korea. He was the first man to ever parachute at night in the Battle of Bastogne with the 101st Airborne. He was the first lieutenant in the door. And uh, he told me I was, he was proud of me, that I came to visit him after I got back from the war and didn't come to him and ask him to get me out of the war. And he said he was proud that he found out that I was put in for Congressional Medal of Honor for single-handedly rescuing a nuclear weapon behind enemy lines where I didn't want to do it, 
I said, why do I got to do it? I didn't leave it there. <laughs> and I said, you can get killed up there at Quezon. And I said, there ain't nothing up there but red Chinese everywhere. And they said, yeah, we could send other guys up there, and we did, but they all got killed, and they're hanging up in bits and pieces in the trees. They said, we could send you up there, and we know you'll get it and come back. I did. They offered me a Presidential uh, Congressional Medal of Honor and asked me if I'd take it from President Bill Clinton. And I laughed and said, can I slap him? And I said, I'm not taking the Congressional Medal of Honor from a dishonorable president. Well, I've since learned I should keep my mouth shut at times because that sure did get me in a lot of trouble. And I've been hunted and hounded like a dog ever since. And, uh, but I would be proud to take the Congressional Medal of Honor from President Donald Trump, who I think is going to be the best president America's had since George Washington. And I think a bunch of short-sighted, blind people would quit running their mouth and start listening to the truth They'd see that. And I'd like to uh, read some of my work right now and ask me to get political. Oops. Your fault. Like why you, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why. If I'm not to be interrupted, I'm you sorry. can wait till I'm done. Thank you. I don't want to hear what your this is Call to America by Max P. Frost. Asunder, we the people fall under the bus. Republican or Democrat, What's the fuss? Aren't we first and foremost Americans? What's best for one is best for all, like me and my son. Two people, yet we are one. Hear the call, not the party. Be not tardy to America. Her need is both our call. Vote best for America in the fall, not for party or money or free. Let us be, please vote free, but vote so we can beat, shut up, don't sell us out. Amen. And now to counter the people to go to Donald Trump. True blue to America, true blue to America, true blue as I can be. Won't let some SOB, cheesy, lousy, half crazy comedian wanna be slander the President of the USA every day, every way. For the sore hillbilly loser, rapist loser, left wing traitor, hillbilly resident, no loyal green beret to the president to take care of business, not less than funny boys making noise, doing the Alex and Jimmy shimmy, while 30,000 emails launch North Korean long range thermal nukes at US and Japan. North Korea stealth submarine. The Russians and the Chinese gave it a hike their, to their dog and said, sick them. They point at each other and say, wasn't us, don't shoot back. It's a fact. The great American lie, fall and die. Bad enough when they lied about me. I'm just a U.S. spy. I know we're expendable. No one cares or cries when we die, cold and alone. I don't care, so there. Dead meat is on. Dead meat, it's on. Feral crabs. Feral cats on the street. 
eat meat. When a loser resident sends email cash to start lying about the president elect, we select. It's time to drain the swamp, to take the guns down and fight tonight. Awu Cape Tiger to Timberwolf. Awu. The United States of America by Max P. Frost. With Henry Ford, affordable re-ride, Hollywood silver screen, the entertainment scene, with Mickey Mouse and Pluto, Donald Duck. Pass our semis, we truck. Expressway, we stand by high with the Wright brothers in boat and jets, we fly and play as TV teaches our computer reaches NASA rockets, U.S. to win the space race to the moon. Look back, not too soon. We freed our slaves, freedom's wars, World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq, fills our graves. Now we have microwaves. Yet we see we stop genocides. Millions died from Hitler, Stalin, Roosevelt, Truman, Ike Eisenhower, Save Freedom Stalin. First, with two atomic bombs, stop the slaughter of our sons and daughters from automatic cannon fodder. Now we're free to call on cell phones that hear and see. Watergate, like Leonard Skinner said, didn't bother me. But the DOJ and the FBI corruption do. They tried to overthrow elected President Donald Trump, it's true. Hillary and Bill Clinton traitors with Russian lies, email spies. How did North Korea all of a sudden get ICBMs, thermonukes? Stratosphere shields to get big time TV cash deals in a flash. To buy an election with lies from the TV guys. Sell out America to be incinerated for cash. They generated TV lies. Oregon by Max Frost. Silent switch. Max, you're, can we pause and we'll give the other ticket holder an opportunity to speak and then we'll be After going. my last poem, thank is, you. Is this, okay, fine. I think it's that's okay. a sequence yep, that's that fine. I don't like to be broken. Thank you for your respect. Oregon by Max P. Frost. Silent whoosh as the yellow glides over a bush. The weasel pops his red splattered head, not to be feed, as life feeds on the dead. An eagle soars to the salmon roars upstream. A giant redwood steams to drop its golden beam, sparkling twinkle gently sprinkled green, moss and gray rocks wakes as water breaks around the knees of a buck deer, sipping clear, cool, fresh life with his wife and a fawn, darts from his foot a prong, hiding neath the leaves, a black bear and cub rub a Douglas tree, coming down to sip nature's sweet wine, from a Douglas pine by the brook and go after the silvery Chinook as the sun glides red bursting yellow rise sparkles 
flashes of grandeur in all of their eyes. Between the purple-green mist, mountains long haze, warming the beginning of their days. As they come to life and Mother Nature plays her sweet song, all the birds sing along as the tree frogs chirp on a little strong, as time at the speed of sound moves along endlessly free. Thank you. I have no comments. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do a hey political announcement or commercial announcement for Curry County Voices. We are a nonprofit of community volunteers filming community events to place on media that's available to everyone in the community. To give you an idea of what we do that we recount last week. We started off by filming the city council meeting in Gold Beach. On Tuesday, we traveled to Brookings to Swak and filmed their Great American Shakeout by Jeremy Dumar on what we need to do when the earth shakes. Wednesday, we were at the high school filming the school board meeting. Yesterday, we were in Brookings filming the walk, the A21 walk against slavery, sex trafficking. We're here today. Tomorrow, we'll be at City Hall in Gold Beach again. They're holding a zoning hearing on whether the marijuana store in Wedderburg can move across the river to Chetco at to Ellensburg Avenue. Tuesday, we'll be at SWAC again, I believe, it's a program about nursing homes. Wednesday, we hope to be two places. The hospital board meets at four o'clock and at six o'clock, at later that day, I think 5.30, SOCAN, the South Coast Environmental Group, meets in Brookings at the Chetco Library with another program on climate change and its impact on us. We need help. We would love to have more people working with us filming. Uh, we will be gathering together a group of hopefully six people sometime this fall. We will bring in a professional to train us in the use of our Equipment. You see an example of it in the room here today. We have three sets of this and the ability to have more than one event going if we have more than one person running the cameras. So there's a yellow pad at the back table. If you would like to sign up, be trained, and join us at Curry County Voices, we would love to have you. We do intend to have more of these afternoons throughout the next 12 months. We certainly intend to hold candidate forums that focus on individual races. The League of Women Voters does a wonderful job, but if you have 20 candidates in an evening, you don't get much. We, we see on national TV how much time you get if they're 12. Well, we'll do it and focus on a specific office if there's a hot contest, if you will. So again, join us. We Thank you for coming. And then we have one more open number, 062. Does the person with 062 wish to speak? Does anyone else in the room wish to speak? Yeah, I certainly didn't intend to do this when I came here today, but whatever. Um, my name is Candace Michelle, and I'm from Brookings. Um, I'm a member of the board at KCIW, um, but I am not speaking for the board. I'm not speaking for the radio station. I'm just speaking for me. Um, the thing about democracy that, uh, that I find so compelling is that it, it may
mandates that we each be involved. The, the form of government itself is based on the people being the government. Now, obviously, that doesn't work when you've got how many millions of people in this country. You can't have every single person being in government. That doesn't work. Um, so we elect people to represent us. Um, back in the day, when the, this government was founded, um, my understanding was that people went and served for a couple of years as a representative and then went back to their farms and did their work or back to their printing presses or back wherever they made a living. So that the, the reality was that you didn't have um, politicians as a class of citizenry that um, you actually did have an opportunity to have a voice. Now, of course, you had to be white and you had to be male. So, <laughs> right away, that left half of the country out, but whatever, right? I mean, we do what we can do. Um, but I think it's important to remember that no matter how much we disagree about issues, the the premise that runs underneath everything is that we all have not only um, an opportunity, but really a duty to say what we believe to be true and obviously do due diligence to make sure that we have facts instead of you know hyperbole and all of that stuff, but the reality is that we have a duty to ask questions. We have a duty to ask our representatives how they came to vote the way that they did, how they, how they saw the issue so that they voted that way and talk that way and think that way, because if they're not representing you, and you, and you, and you, if they're not representing each one of us, we need to know why not. I get it. I did not vote for Donald Trump, but he represents me, so he needs to speak with my voice in there somewhere. Doesn't have to be the primary voice, okay, I get it. But each one of our elected representatives needs to speak with our voices in the mix. They can't just represent the people who voted them in because that's not who they represent. Once they get in the office, they represent us all. So, I think it's our duty to be as active as possible in government and to hold our elected officials responsible. That's it. I think we ought to give all of our speakers a round of applause. And unless somebody else has an urge to come to the microphone, uh, we'll treat this open mic free speech event closed.